In many ways it's harder to create a third person game than a first person game because your character is on screen at all times and there's an expectation that they'll navigate the world and react realistically. Here's how we're approaching this in Hellblade. In our early third person action games the character was little more than a robot uh, that you would push around through the world. And in Enslaved, we then took the idea that the character is alive and started to incorporate some body language there so she could express back to the player. We have more memory now and better animation tools, so we want to make sure that Senua's appearance and movement is part of what makes her feel believable. Now, we already had Senua moving around the world in a basic fashion, but we kept wanting to add more layers, like what would she look like uh, when she was frightened, when she's wading through water? Uh, when she's wounded and the list just kept growing and growing but we only have two animators on the project and they have to cover all of Senua and all of the enemies so this was a problem that needed solving. Having built our own mocap studio we decided that motion capture was the only possible way that we had a chance of achieving this within our constraints. As we had never used mocap before for gameplay animations we had to test that this would work and as there was no fallback, the only other option would be to severely limit what Senua was capable of. We started with the basics, standing, walking, running, jogging, in all directions. How do you make that feel responsive and look good with motion capture? <laughs> so here's an example of what the, the takes look like before they've been cleaned up. So you can see there are like parts where the feet are broken and the toes and things like that and um, but it's easy to fix so here's a version where actually it's all been cleaned up it looks much more polished and it's at this stage that we would put it into the game but I find the biggest challenge is making nice blends so obviously you want the animations to blend really well together and then to be seamless so you can't see where the transitions start and end but also keeping the responsiveness of the characters that we want. I've brought all the animations, all the movement animations in for Senua. Um, this is a strafe blend space. As you can see, all these, I mean, these are what, like uh, five or six animations, and um, they're all in phase and in sync, and they just blend together perfectly. To add to the responsiveness, we added things like having her lean in the direction that you're running in. It gives you a, a response straight away as soon as you start like turning the stick. It just feels more natural than her running in a straight line all the time. Now we knew the basics worked, we then captured all the layers, walking in a fearful manner, walking through water, walking through fire, walking through deep water. Uh, that one was particularly difficult because you have to simulate the resistance that the water would have against the character. So the biggest issue with looping animations is that after a while they just look like looping animations. People don't always walk in the same way, so um, we can try and add this variety to the game by mixing together a number of different cycles with different characteristics. Let's make her cough. Okay, so here we're trying to um, simulate her walking through smoke and um, I've added three looping animations which it decides to play at random intervals. Um, this means that we don't always get the same loop and it's totally random each time uh, which adds unlimited variety. <laughs> We also captured all of our one-off interactions such as opening doors or traversing parts of the environment such as narrow ledges or precarious beams. We now had the motion capture animation for Senua crossing the beam in a steady fashion, balancing to the extreme left and extreme right and falling. So code and design can now take this and vary the amount that she would naturally sway, ultimately leading to her falling. And in game, you would have to compensate for the swaying using the left sticks to get her across safely.
So far we've shot three to four days worth of movement which gives us the bulk of what we need and we're in the process of adding these to the game. The results so far have been promising and we'll capture more as and when we need it. I don't see motion capture as a silver bullet that replaces animators. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's an empowering tool for animators. So whenever we do the motion capture session, the animators are there to make sure that they get exactly what they want. Only then that can they take the raw materials and shape the character to be responsive, to be consistent, to be who they want the character to be. In, in the same way that an illustrator would take a live model or photo reference to create their vision of what they want that illustration to be. The end result is that animators like Chris can spend less time on the basics and the mundane and focus their attention on making the character feel responsive, natural and full of character. Shinatar